Dear viewers, today I'll be explaining about the prostate. Prostate is a gland which is only found in males. It is a very important gland and it is associated with aging men. Prostate gland is located deep in the human body, in the pelvic cavity, under the urinary bladder and above the urogenital diaphragm. These videos which I have started for you, they are comprising of three videos. First, we'll be talking about the normal anatomy of the prostate. Then we'll be talking about benign enlargement of the prostate which is famous with the name of BPH. And last, we'll be looking into the prostatic cancer. In these videos, I will be developing correlation of anatomical features in understanding of disease processes. It is highly recommended watch all these videos together. Now, to begin, let's have an orientation of this model. This is a sagittal view of a male pelvis and what are we looking at from anterior to posterior. This is my pubic symphysis and that's my rectum. And there you can see in the middle, this is the urinary bladder and just under the urinary bladder, what we see here, this is the prostate gland. This is the penis and this is the testes. And now this is my prostate gland. Before going further, just behind that, to the posterior surface of the urinary bladder, you can see the seminal vesicles and you can see this ejaculatory duct. Ejaculatory duct is the continuation of the vas deferens. Now if you look at the prostate, it has an apex and a base, anterior surface and a posterior surface. Apex is closely associated with the urogenital diaphragm and base is just located at the bladder neck. Anteriorly we have the pubic symphysis and posterior surface is related to the rectum. It also have inferior lateral surfaces which cannot be seen in this model. They are closely associated with the levator ani muscle. Now let's quickly look into the urethra. And now here you are looking at this whole, can you see this line which is going, which has started from the lumen of the bladder and is going all the way down. That is my urethra. And this urethra, it has different parts. And these names are given when the urethra passes through different regions of the body. Look at the bladder neck. This is the pre-prostatic urethra. The moment this urethra enters, it runs through the substance of the prostate gland. We call it prostatic urethra. Prostatic urethra in the prostate, it receives this ejaculatory duct, a pair of ejaculatory duct, which are entering from the posterior surface of the gland. The prostatic urethra is the widest part of the urethra. After this, at the apex, this urethra passes through this muscle. And now, when it passes through this muscle, this, is, this part of the urethra is known as the membranous urethra, the most delicate part of human urethra. After that, this whole urethra is given the name of spongy urethra. Spongy urethra has two parts, a horizontal part and a vertical part. This horizontal part is called the bulbar urethra and this one, this vertical part is known as the penile urethra. This horizontal part or the bulbar urethra is more associated with straddle type of injury. What is this straddle type of injury? Straddle injuries are if someone is falling on a bar or someone is riding on a bicycle and slips and land on the bar. The membranous urethra is closely associated with catheterization, with Foley's catheter insertion. In this situation, if someone is not gentle and applying undue force may cause 
the rupture or the damage of the membranous urethra. The bulbar urethra is more prone when someone is falling on a transverse bar. And then we can see the longest part of the male urethra. This is the penile urethra. And near to its end, there is an ovoid structure. This ovoid structure is given the name of navicular fossa. And at the extreme end, this is the external urethral meatus. Hanging down, we can see this is the testes. And there we can see the beginning of my vas difference. And this is the epidermis. A walnut shaped organ. Partially, it is made up of glands. And partially, it is made up of fibromuscular tissue. And it lies under the urinary bladder and above the urogenital diaphragm. The prostate it pierces by the urethra and the part of the urethra who pierces the prostate we call it prostatic urethra. If you look at its dimension its width is more than its height and it is 4 cm into 3 cm into 2 cm. The prostate provides a secretion which contributes to the seminal fluid and around 30% of seminal fluid is being contributed from the seminal vesicles. In females, there is no prostate. So the female homologue is a small group of paraurethral glands of skinny. The prostate has a base and an apex, an anterior surface, a posterior surface and inferior lateral surfaces. The base is the upper surface and it fuses with the neck of the urinary bladder. The blunt apex is the lower part and prostatic urethra when it emerges from here then this part of the urethra we call it membranous urethra and it is surrounded by sphincter urethry muscle. The anterior surface is closely associated with pubic symphysis and it is at the the space in between we call it retropubic space and posterior surface is associated with the lower rectum and this space is known as the rectovesical space. And then inferior laterally the levator and eye muscle is closely associated with the inferior lateral surface of the prostate gland. Now if you can see there is a duct which has been shown which is joining my prostatic urethra. This is the ejaculatory duct and this ejaculatory duct is the continuation of the vas deferens. So vas deferens it joins with the seminal vesicle and they are making two ejaculatory ducts. They pierces the posterior surface of the gland and they are joining with the prostatic part of the urethra and there you can see these numerous prostatic ducts they are also opening up into the prostatic urethra. Here we are looking at a section which shows the prostate gland and the structures which are placed in its periphery. Anteriorly we can see pubic symphysis and posteriorly we can see the rectum. If you can pay attention a thin strong layer of connective tissue, a thin strong layer of connective tissue at the periphery of the gland it forms a true capsule of the prostate and outside this there is a condensation of the pelvic fascia where it is this is the condensation of the pelvic fascia and that forms my false capsule and between these two capsule the true capsule and the false capsule what lies is the prostatic plexus of veins and the neurovascular bundle. The gland, if you look at the gland, it consists of SNI of varying shapes and size and they are embedded in a fibromuscular stroma, a mixture of connective tissue and smooth muscle. This is the characteristic histological feature of the prostate gland. Now if we look further, this section demonstrate the prostatic urethra different prostatic glands, the fibromuscular and glandular stroma, the internal sphincter and external sphincter of which are associated with the urethra. 
Now the prosthetic urethra, if we can look at it, this blue structure, it's around 3 to 4 centimeter in length and it passes through the substance of the prostate. And if you can pay attention, there is a midline ridge which runs throughout and this called this is called urethral crest and it projects into the lumen of the posterior wall throughout most of the length of the prostatic urethra. This is the continuation of my trigon. If you see, if you pay attention at the mid part of it, they, this part has been swollen and this swollen ovoid structure we call it Veru Montanum. Veru Montanum is a very important landmark. It has a surgical value. During transurethral resection of the prostate, surgeon cannot see from outside and this Veru Montanum act as a landmark and this demarcates if the surgeon during its resection of the prostate if he comes beyond this point there is fair enough chance he may cause damage to the external urethral sphincter and if this external urethral sphincter may be damaged then the patient will become incontinent. So this varumontanum act as a very important landmark during transurethral resection of the prostate. If you can pay attention, we can see here in between this purple big area and that is my prosthetic utricle. This is a female homologue of the uterus and the vagina and these two orange openings, these are the openings of the two ejaculatory duct. And if you can see throughout these greenish openings, these are the opening of the prosthetic glands. Now, these are the glandular element. If you remember in the beginning, I told you prostate is a glandular and a fibromuscular organ. So this is the glandular element of my prostate gland. And there we can see the fibromuscular part of my prostate gland. And there we can see the different ducts which are coming from these glands and they are pouring their secretion into the lumen of the prostatic urethra. And this is my urethral crest which becomes later as the Veru Montanum. And there we can see the prosthetic utricle, its opening and these are the two openings of the ejaculatory ducts. And now this is the internal urethral sphincter which is made up of smooth muscle. It is a very important structure, especially in males. Because in males, the genitourinary tract is one tract. But in females, the genitourinary tract, there is a separate genital tract and there is a separate urinary tract. So during the process of intercourse, this internal urethral sphincter is being closed and this closure of the internal urethral sphincter, it prevents the retrograde ejaculation. And this internal urethral sphincter is made up of smooth muscle and it, it is under involuntary control. Autonomic system controls this. If you look down, these are my external urethral sphincter and these are the skeletal muscle and they are controlled by somatic nerve. The nerve who controls my external urethral sphincter, that nerve is known as the pudendal nerve. Look at the zones of the prostate. And if you look at that, this is my urethra. Different parts of the urethra. This is the pre-prostatic urethra, prostatic urethra, and there we can see the membranous urethra. And then we have this spongy urethra and out of my spongy urethra you can see the bulbar part of my spongy urethra. And now these are my ejaculatory ducts and we can see there, there is a pair of ejaculatory duct. This is my vas deferens and these are the seminal vesicles and they are opening into my prosthetic urethra and they are bringing the sperms, the semen. And then these ejaculatory ducts are surrounded by a zone of the prostate, the tissue who surrounds these ejaculatory ducts and it's placed just behind the prostatic urethra, this area, this zone is known as the central zone of the prostate and it makes around 20% volume of my prostate gland. Then we can see that there is another tissue of the prostate who surrounds my 
urethra and this part of the urethra this zone of the prostate we call it transitional zone and that contributes around 5% volume of the prostate gland then comes a big contribution which is around 70% of the volume of the prostate is being contributed by this peripheral zone now last but not the least this is the fibromuscular zone the prostate gland once thought to be divided into five anatomical lobes but it is now recognized that five lobes can only be distinguished in the fetal gland prior to 20th weeks of gestation from a morbid anatomical perspective the glandular tissue may be subdivided into three distinct zones the peripheral zones which contributes around 70% volume the central which contributes around 20 25% of the volume and transitional zone which contributes around 5% of the volume the zones are more used in the clinical practice non glandular tissue which is my fibromuscular zone has no significant value the central zone which surrounds my ejaculatory duct does not have any clinical correlation but this transitional zone which only contributes 5% of the volume of the prostate gland but it is really important because it surrounds my prostatic urethra and once there is an enlargement of this zone of the prostate it will compress it will clasp the urethra which goes through it and once it happens this is a condition which gives rise to bladder outflow obstruction and this will present as bph and then this outer core which can which is being contributed by this peripheral zone and that contributes around 70% volume of my prostate gland so this zone is the site where the cancer cells can be found so clinically we have two zones which are more relevant and more important this greenish transitional zone which is for bph and this reddish zone the peripheral zone which is which is the site for the cancer of the prostate gland now the blood supply of the prostate gland primarily the blood supply to the prostate gland it comes from internal like iliac artery which is a branch from my common iliac artery this internal iliac artery gives inferior vesical artery middle rectal artery and internal pudendal artery they gives prostatic branches and they are supplying this gland the venous drainage basically there are two channels the veins form a prostatic plexus which receives the dorsal vein of the penis and drains into the internal iliac veins on each side some of the venous drainage it passes through the plexus of veins they lie in front of the vertebral bodies and within the neural canal